Deborah was left almost blinded after a man unleashed his animalistic and barbaric behavior on her shortly after he bashed her car with his car in Benin City, Edo State. According to Deborah, she was driving in Benin City alongside her friend when an unknown road user bashed her car, removing her bomber. She pulled over and stopped by to have a discussion with the man as to what he had done to her car. The man came out of his car but showed little or no remorse at all. And he was not even concerned by the fact that he had damaged her bomber. Deborah said she told him that her bomber cost 50,000 naira. According to Deborah, there was a lady seated in the front seat with the man in his car. The lady stepped down, pleading with Deborah to calm down, and she offered Deborah that she was going to give her the sum of 20,000 naira as against the 50,000 naira that she had earlier requested for her bumper. But the man warned the lady seriously, threatening to beat her up if she sends the 20,000 naira to Deborah. Deborah said she was shocked. Having heard those words from the man and she had to ask him if he was looking for something else apart from him damaging her car. Those were the only words Deborah said before the man pounced on her, beating her blue black. He was said to have torn her shirt, he tore her trouser, literally stripping her naked on the street. Deborah said she was bleeding profusely while her friend was attempting to pull her away. But she suddenly noticed that the doors to the man's car were all open and she rushed there and picked his two phones alongside his car key. She rushed back into her car in an attempt to escape but the man ran after her hitting the car with his hands until she was able to get away she drove away from the scene to a safe place where she was able to pull over and called her mother her mother asked her to go to the nearest police station and make an official report to the police that she was able to do she went to the Ugo police station and made an official report there the police took her statement and referred her to the police clinic where her wounds were stitched and medications were given to her Upon returning back to the police station that same day with her mother, she said there were many people there and the police claimed that they had arrested and detained the man who had battered her on the road. Deborah said the police asked them to return back to the police station the next day. But before they left the police station, another woman approached Deborah, telling her she was the wife to be of the man who had battered her. She was pleading with Deborah to let go of the case because she said they were getting married on Saturday. So for her, that was all that mattered to her. After Deborah left the police station, she and her mother reported back the next morning as requested by the police, but they were shocked to discover that the police had released the man who had battered her to go scot-free. When Debbie asked why they had to release the man in their absence, the IPO told them that he was acting on the instructions of the DPO known as Mr. Bamidele, whom Debbie alleged to be shielding the suspect in this case. According to Debbie, the police also attempted to extort the sum of 100,000 naira from her. Ever since then, Debbie has been unable to reach this man. Neither has he made any attempt to reach Debbie to know how she's been faring. Debbie was left almost blinded. Not to mention the trauma that she has been going through since the occurrence of this sad incident on the 8th of January 2024. Even though the police has been uncooperative in getting the culprit to answer for what he had done to Debbie, Harrison Guamnisho has taken it upon himself to fetch out the culprit from wherever he's been hiding. Luckily, the search led them to Uyi Grand Hotel, JRA Benin City on Saturday where he was having his wedding and he's been identified as Mr. Nusakre Uwara Bona. And our eyes are on the police in a state to ensure that justice is served and seen to be served. We wish Debbie a very speedy recovery. If you've watched this far, I would love to know your thoughts on this story. What do you think Debbie should do to ensure that justice is served on this matter? That Mr. Nosakri does not get away with what he did to her. What do you think could have been done? And do you think that the woman that Mr. Nosakre married could have played a better role than she did in ensuring justice for Debbie in this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. In the meantime, guys, take care of yourself, take care of your emotions, take care of your mental health, be kind to yourself, be kind to the people around you, and always, always stay safe.
I remain Dorcas, aka Oluokun, and I love you guys.